Welcome back to Folk Festival USA on National Public Radio. I'm Steve Rath here in Mountain View, Arkansas at the Ozark Folk Center and the 15th Annual Arkansas Folk Festival. We've got a couple of minutes before the Fiddler's Jamboree begins. Fate Morrison is one of the fiddlers we're about to hear in that jamboree. Morrison lives in Fox, Arkansas, where he practices and works to maintain his place in nine generations of fiddlers. A little while ago, Louisa Walker sat down for a chat with Fate Morrison. This fiddle music has been handed down through the generations. And ever since the fiddle was made, there's been a Morrison playing the fiddle. And my grandfather, when he came over here, he was a fiddler, and he played for George Washington's army at the Valley Forge. So you can see it there, that, and then it's been handed right on down through the generations, and we have run it back to nine, at least nine generations that plays the fiddle. And of course, you hear it, my grandson play the fiddle. Well, I, I don't play into these late numbers that's being played. I play strictly old-time music, the old numbers that go back through the different generations. And uh, I have been playing the fiddle. Don't look at me like that. I've been playing the fiddle for about 62 years. So I've got it more that I, I, my fingers are not flexible like they were in the younger days. You know, they just got me, even though I'm in my second childhood. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, if I can ever hear a number and get it recorded in my mind, I can sit down and begin to work that keyboard and get the, get the notes, I have to take it slow until I get that all lined out, and then I get it up then to its proper timing. But here's something another now that I have noticed in late years, uh, especially in our younger generation, they've taken back after, uh, taken after the bluegrass style. They're getting their numbers out of time. They're, they're speeding it up. And you know, every number, you take any, any song that's composed, you know, it'll give you three, four time, or four, four time, or six, eight time, or whatever it might be, you know. Well, if you speed that up, well, you've ruined it, or you can get it too slow. The proper timing on a number is one of the most essential things that there is in music. One of the things here, uh, we're to play the old time numbers. That's the reason why we're, uh, we're known now as the folk capital of the world, or the old time music. And, uh, we have people that have been that have come over here from England. Here are some of the numbers that we play here. They say we have the true form, or they have revised over that, and they've got away from the true form. You see that? Now I have lost quite a number of fiddle numbers that my dad used to play, and other older people that I learned from. You know, and I had to learn one number from an old fellow by the name of McVeigh. He was an elder man. He must have been in his seventies just when I was fourteen years old. He had you a number that was composed after the the ship Mayflower, mm -hmm. and that is that was played with a, with a, the G string down about two or three octaves. But I learned that number. But in 20 years, uh, I didn't play any to speak of at all. A lot of those numbers have uh, they've got away from me, and I can't recall them to memory.
find out what numbers we know so we can play together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay, we have one of our visiting fiddle players now. I want you to make welcome Mr. Cotton Combs from over around Fettville, Arkansas. Neighbor of his, a cousin, Eldon, going to be playing. Loy, Unisizemore over in Springdale. And I don't know, I didn't get the name of that spoon player there. Who's he? Douglas the Spoon Player. Cotton combs. Thank you. Now for opening number, we're going to try a little uh, bull Durham. I think they're going to have a square dance here on about the second one. I don't know for sure. So Yellow Springs. While we're waiting on them square dancers, we'll try a little uh, rubber dog.
All right, here he is. You all set to go? <laughs> We're going to try a little 8th of January for this square name. <laughs> a little dragon bow.
play it safe. Let's play it with your car. We'll save them all. Now, I got a request from bass pedal player here. I'm going to play old Joe Clark for him. That square dance caller with cotton combs was Jackie Stewart, who talked a little earlier with Louisa Walker about putting the moves on. First little boy out by the right and back by the left and two-hand swing. That's standard for all of them, just about it. And then just up the center and by the world, and lady go one way, gent go the other, and when to meet, everybody swing, and everybody pull and dance around that corner girl. Uh, the fill-ins are just like a... That's just the main, tell them where to go, and they like the fill-ins. When they know what they're doing, I'll just say something like a... Old Sal and seven little pigs cross the branch. The old Sal whistling little pigs dance. Or wolves in the woods, the hearing growl. Rats in the mill bear, hearing howl. So a lot of those aren't, they aren't actually calls. They're just filling in time until people get ready for the next call. Yeah, it's just some uh, old sayings some old timers thought up and passed down, and I've learned them. What are some of the best ones? I like a little boy in his little red wagon, one wheel down his axle dragging. And 
a uh, blue-eyed goose and a gray-eyed gander playing in a branch way down yander. And I love my wife and I love my baby, love my biscuits, soft and gravy. Those are about my favorite ones. Uh, my father-in-law and his family, there are 11 of them, and they've danced all their life, and every one of the men can call, and I just learned from them. What are some of the names of the basic moves you do in your square dances? Uh, well, like on your left, it can be called a balance on the corner or balance eight, and a uh, modern square dancer calls it all and left. It's all the same thing, and then they're just do si -dos, the main ones, and two-hand swing. That's just basically the main things of the square dance. And then each set changes, and you have to learn the set, and once you learn it, you always know it. But uh, I call it different than a man does 20 miles over there, and everybody else calls it different. But it's right no matter who calls it. But a dancer would know what they were doing if it were a caller from here or 20 miles away, or if the calls are different, would they still know what to do? They could get through it, and after they did it once, like, we're only doing a quarter of a square here. There's three more parts to it. And after they did the first quarter, they could know the rest of it and learn it. And it's just, after you learn one dance, you can pick up from county to county and place to place. So are they actually follow, following your calls as you call them, or do they already know the dance and they're going through it? They know the dance, but they don't know when I'm going to tell them to do it, and they have to listen to me, because I might not decide to do it exactly the same way each time. But it's a basically the same thing over and over. But it's just, I might throw it at a different time. Has this kind of square dancing, the old style, has it changed a lot, or do you think it's the same the way your family do has always done it? Well, it's changed from the time I learned it and what the person I learned it from. It changes every day. Like, I change it a little bit, and you don't notice it until it's too late, and you forget how it's done. And, uh, like, I got a taste of my Uncle Kermit calling, and he's the one who I copied after, and uh, we, we both called different than he did then. It just, it changed. Do you think it's still the same dance that the old, the old folks did that first came out here? It's pretty close. We're trying to keep it as close as we can, but it's still changing a little bit. Okay, now from Nashville, Tennessee, I want you to give a round of applause to Ramona Jones. Ramona? And with Ramona be Sharon, Cheryl White, and maybe somebody else later on. Ramona. Thank you. We kind of transplanted down here from from Tennessee and Texas, but we're glad to be in Arkansas today, aren't we? <laughs> Let's start off with a little bit of Wake Up Susan, girls. <laughs> today because I've been staying back here listening myself and I sure enjoy it more than anybody. Uh, these girls, I know they told you, this is Sharon and Cheryl White and now they live in Nashville, Tennessee and their father's kind of kind of a famous uh, picker too. He picks the mandolin. In fact, they, they all work together all, all over the United States with Grandpa sometimes. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to get him to come along with me. We're going to do another little old hoedown here since this is kind of the day for fiddling and uh, this is one you might not have heard before. I hope some of you have. This is one I believe Alan Jabour kind of brought out. It was down in the North Carolina mountains, and it's called uh, Over the Waterfall. <laughs> Thank you. 
out the women, women's liberation band. <laughs> We're all, all girls today. This is my daughter, Elisa Jones. Let's give her a hand. Uh, we're going to do an old uh, custom that they used to do years and years ago. My dad was an old-time fiddler, and he told me that they uh, used to take the big straws out of the broom and beat rhythm on the fiddle while they, because they didn't have other rhythm instruments. They didn't have nice Martin guitars and, and, and uh, Randy Wood guitars and all that either. So they used to just play rhythm on the fiddle, you know, with another, with like knitting needles or the big straws out of the broom. So we call it straw on the fiddle. And Lisa's going to do that for me on one that Mr. Onus Morrison taught me. And he's here today, and you're going to hear him a little bit later. But it's called Devilish Mary. <laughs> You might have noticed that some of the youngsters in the audience while the music, they've been jumping around, not because they want to dance, but they got bullfrogs in their pockets. Because this is a day for our annual bullfrog jumping contest and turtle race. And it's supposed to start here in about three or four minutes, so if you're one of the contestants and you got a frog or a turtle in your pocket, or in your wife's purse, or mother's purse, get him on out and go on out to the back and we got a rink set up for you. And we're going to continue with the music in here. We got a fiddler from Camden, Arkansas, Mr. Glenn Harris, and uh, Irvin Freeze, and Charlie Richardson, and Bud Bell. Thank you. 
Irvin Freeze, Charlie Richardson, and Bud Bell, led by Glenn Harris of Camden, Arkansas, in Gold Rush. Many years ago. Don't get about promises you made me and so. sung two verses of that, Sam. I guess that's all right. We're going to do a fiddle tune now, and I think they're going to bring the square dancers out here, called Bill Cheatham. Thank you. 
about Mr. Charlie Richardson now. He played earlier on a guitar, but he went back to get his fiddle, so make him welcome, if you will. Irvin Freeze, Aubrey Richardson, and some fiddle music. Fiddler Charlie Richardson closing our highlights from the 15th annual Arkansas Folk Festival and Fiddler's Jamboree. Our thanks to Jack Quails, the Ozark Folk Center's general manager, and to Bud Bell, the center's director of music programs, for their assistance. Our program was produced for Folk Festival USA by Louisa Walker and Aubrey Richardson at the studios of the Ozark Folk Center. I'm Steve Rath, inviting you to join us next week when Folk Festival USA celebrates the first annual Festival of American Outtakes. Subtitled Notes from the Cutting Room Floor, this down-home Washington, D.C. festival is a collection of performances from past festivals in songs and styles that we cut out of the first shows. Too long, we said. Too esoteric. Too something. But we saved them, saved them for this Someday a Place for Us festival, the Festival of American Outtakes, next week on Folk Festival USA. Our associate producer is Deborah Jane Lamberton, our editor and scriptwriter is Rosemary Tobin, and post-production engineering is handled by David Harris. I'm Steve Rath. The funds for this program are provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and this is NPR, National Public Radio. <laughs>